Good evening, everyone. Right now, it's 9.31 on February 4th. I uh, almost forgot. Shooting stars tonight. Oh, God, that's... Is that the second time this week? Didn't we have shooting stars on, like, mo on like Monday or Tuesday? What? I mean, I'll take it, I guess, but didn't we just have shooting stars? Alright, um, you know, we're just, today is a news day, because, like, there are, like, ten pieces of news, so, I guess, let's news? I was gonna say, it's still the fourth, right? Because, wait, why are we getting a letter from Mom today? Okay, where the freak is my news? There we go. Yeah, so we got a bunch of news, um, I want to start off, I guess, with, um... Some, I guess this is technically not news. Uh, South Park has started up again. As I've said before, I'm a fan of South Park. Um, I definitely think it's not as good as it used to be. I, and I do stand by it being good for the most part, you know. And I think, because... Uh, praise Helix. I think Trey Parker and Matt Stone have said at one point that South Park is a political litmus test. You will watch South Park... And see whatever politics you want reflected in it. So I watch South Park and I see an ex a liberal show. Right? Something extremely left-wing. Right? But I guarantee you someone on the right will watch it. And be like, no, this is extremely right. This South Park's pro-Trump. Right? It, you'll see whatever politics you want in it. And I know there are people on the... Um, left to see a very right-wing show in South Park, and that's why they hate it. And I guarantee you there are people on the right who see an extremely left-leaning show in South Park, and that's why they hate it. It's a political litmus test. Everyone will see it differently. Litmus test, or is it Rorschach test, actually? I think Rorschach test is actually the right word I was looking for. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's like those ink blot drawings, right? Rorsch I guess a Rorschach test is actually the word I was looking for. You'll see whatever politics you want in it. Yeah, so the new season started, and I watched the first episode of the new season. Eh, like, I didn't... I thought the COVID special was fine. I liked the idea of an entire South Park season taking place in the future. Or, you know, the... Right, with them as adults. I was like, yeah, I would actually be down for an entire season of that. But now, no, we're back. They're kids again, doing kids stuff. Like, this first episode is about, like, pajama day, right? And because of what's going on in class, they get pajama day taken away. And, right, it, like, causes them to freak out. And on, and on that hand, I'm like, oh, that's not a bad idea for a South Park episode. Right? Like, that's a very standard, like, opening for a South Park episode. Right? Oh, the kids lose pajama day, and now they have to fight to get it back. Okay. That's a salt. That's fine. And then they get into, um, the stuff with, the like, adults start wearing pajamas to support the kids. And, like, the pajamas become a metaphor for, um, wearing masks, right? Where it's like, oh, well, you, you're required to wear pajamas into the building. But once you're inside, you don't have to wear them anymore. And, oh, we're a progressive workplace. We wear pajamas to work. It's... It's definitely not one of their best metaphors, but, you know, I could tell what they're doing. I don't... Again, I... It's... It's a whatever episode. I just... I just really... Like, yeah, I, I thought the COVID specials were fine. Right? Like, I enjoyed them more than I hated them. But I definitely do feel that since season 20, South Park has gone downhill. Specifically season 20 onward. Season 20 is terrible. Absolute garbo. And I blame the election for that one. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say part of the, they're going to start doing South Park in February now, so that way they don't just they just don't have to deal with the election anymore. I mean, they still probably will, because again, Trump's going to run again in two years. But you know, I don't know, because I know part of like the COVID special and how how it ended was like you know we need to get back to having like good old like jokes. Right? We need to get back to, like, the classic South Park. We need to cut ourselves a fucking break. 
and just have a good time which i can totally get behind and like i do think that message of like you know it's been a hard time with covid everything fucking sucks we need to cut ourselves a break is actually i think a decent message and again i think the special was actually pretty decent definitely one of the better things they've put out in recent years But, yeah. But, yeah, so, I was... It's whatever. Yeah. The stuff with the kids was at least a little bit more interesting than the stuff with the adults. We just, like, it just felt more like, oh, we're, we're, we're making this commentary and that's it. Which, yeah, I get it. It's, it's all fucking stupid at the end of the day. The fact that... We're, I think the stupider fact is that we're still doing it two years later. That, like, if everyone had just gotten vaccinated this could have been over in um, May of last year and now we're we're still in this about a year late a year longer than we had to be yep all of this could have been prevented this could have been over but because people refuse to get vaccinated it won't end and it's too late like it's too late to kill like we could have gotten rid of covid wiped it off the wiped it out the same way we wiped out like measles or um we, we haven't gotten rid of chicken pox, have we? I don't think so. No, I know for a fact we haven't. But yeah, we could have gotten rid of COVID, but because people... Uh, small... Did, have we gotten rid of smallpox? I don't think so, but... I don't know. And I, I know, again, we got rid of measles and then we brought it back because people refused to get vaccinated. Because all it takes is a single generation for people to forget how like how important vaccines were like we created vaccines for measles wiped out measles and then so the next generation didn't have to deal with measles and as a result they forgot how important the vaccines were for getting rid of measles and then a bunch of them became anti-vaxxers right who refused to get the measles vaccines and then a bunch of kids needlessly died of measles because fuck everything right like humanity humanity's already doomed at least just enjoy the ride before we wipe ourselves out fuck but yeah no this covid <laughs> i've said this a thousand times before the pandemic could have been over we could be done with all this shit we could be back oh my <laughs> and then there's a there, there's <laughs> so i've seen people responding to, there's like a tiktok where it's like some karen being like name a single time in human history in which people's rights were taken away and then later on given back to them slavery i know she's a white karen so she's never had to deal with oppression in her lives but slavery their rights were taken away and then they were given back i mean sure they didn't they're still they still don't fully have all their rights and people are still fighting against redlining districts every day. But, yeah, no, it happens all the time. For fuck's sake. Fucking white people, man. Yeah. Uh, so there's the politics segment for the show. Um, next, let's talk about th uh, the NFT segment of the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, fucking Brie Larson. You know, I don't hate Brie Larson. Like, I, I think she's fine. You know, I, I like, I kind of like her more on, like, Twitter than I do her, like, acting performances, right? Um, did, I think we visited her Animal Crossing Island, because she's a huge Animal Crossing fan. And I, I, that sounds like something we did. We visited her Dream Address Island. I don't know, we might not have. I know we visited a few, though. Way back in the day. A, um, we got a Lunar Rover? What? Okay, I figured that's what it looked like. <laughs> it needs tires. But yeah, um... Yeah, I, you know, like, I, I saw a post a few days ago that was talking about, like, oh, all these people on Twitter, all these celebrities are talking about NFTs. And then there was Brie Larson who was, like, talking about soup or whatever. And it's like, yeah, that's so much better. Nope, today she got on the NFT bandwagon. Fuck. Just pay artists actual money to make you good art and stop getting into this cryptocurrency bullshit. You know, you know, I need to watch, uh, I guess Folding Ideas did a video about NFTs and I think it's like two hours. 
But it's like, I guess it's the most comprehensive video out there. Like, it's really impressive, like, how in-depth and detailed it gets. So, I'm really, so, yeah, I've heard great things about it. You know me, I love a good video essay to put on in the background while, like, I play Pokemon and whatnot. Admittedly, right now, I'm trying to get caught up on my podcast, but same difference. But yeah, NFTs, it's all fucking, it's all fucking scams and pyramid schemes. And they're just fucking nightmares to deal with and a half. But yep, Brie Larson's in on NFTs. There's another name onto the list. Fucking Christ. Just pay actual artists. They'll make something really good. Like, it won't be AI-generated or anything from, like, a stock, a stock set of assets. It'll be something that's personalized and looks really good. Unlike these fucking NFTs that are just the ugliest shit. Because they all have to be, right, uh, randomized, randomly generated out of stock assets. Right? Like, someone draws, like, a thousand different heads, and then it just picks, like, random combinations of heads, eyes, hair, shit like that. And that's why they're all so fucking ugly. Ugh, God, it's a mess. Fucking NFTs. But yeah, um, so yeah, that's fucking NFT news. As always, there is probably more, but you know, I'm just gonna stop right there. Uh, while we're brewing coffee, I'm going to pull up Twitter for the next news story. Twitter. Tweeter. Alright, um... Okay, we got fossils. I guess let's go... Talk to... Katrina. I guess let's go do that next. Yeah, we got we got to be fast here. But so our next news story is um so Nintendo put out their financials. Um So, I guess I'll just start off by reading the numbers. Um the Nintendo Switch hardware-wise has finally broken 100 million units. It's now sold 103.54 million units. Now, I guess that's more than the... Oops. Oh, God, I'm hitting the wrong ones. I guess that's more than the Wii. In my head, the Wii is like over 120 million? But I guess not. I guess the Wii only sold 100 million? I don't know. I should really... I guess I should check that right now. But yeah, so the Switch is selling insanely well. Like, we already knew this, but yeah, it's broken 100 million. I th and I think that's also better than the PS1. I think it had already actually already beaten the PS1. Uh, best selling consoles of all time. But yeah, I think I think it had already beaten the PS1, and now it's beaten the PS. And I mean, it's still got a while to go until the PS2. Um, I actually think this is real. Yeah, I think I think that's real. I know the other one's fake. Let's see. The PS2 has sold 155 million units. I think the DS has also sold 150 million units. So those are the two insane ones. Oh, so the the PS5 sold 155 million units. The DS sold 154. That's still wild to think about. Um 
Yeah, it's the PlayStation 4, the Nintendo Switch, the original PlayStation, and the Wii have sold over a um, hundred million units. Ugh. This this is a ter. I'm trying to get a list here. This is a freaking terrible list. Okay. Um. Let's see. So yeah, the the PlayStation sold 102 million, and the Wii sold 101 million. Oh, I must be thinking of the PS4. The PS4 sold 116 million, point nine. So it's basically 117. So yeah, it's so the Switch is now the what fifth best selling console of all time. How much did the oh the Game Boy sold 118? I could see it getting at number three. I could see the Switch easily. I don't, Nintendo, of course, will always say the Switch is at the middle of its lifespan. But I, I don't know about that. I could see the Switch successor coming in a few... I don't know. Right now, we're dealing with chip shortages. And because of these chip shortages that are going on, this next generation of consoles might last longer than every prior generation. Because, you know, these chip shortages are supposed to go on for, like, years. Like, that sucks, but, you know, to build the factories to make new chips, it's going to take a while. So the chip shortages aren't ending anytime soon. And because of that, the current console generation is probably going to last longer. And in theory, that's actually pretty good. Because, like, it's usually, like, halfway through a console's lifespan that people, like, start to figure out the hardware. And then even still, we get, like, a few games before then we have to move on to the next console. Right. And so the idea that, hey, we'll have a few, we'll have longer time with this console means better games near the end of its lifespan. Because people will, are, yeah, because people will fully know how the console works. But yeah, so the Switch, fifth best selling console of all time, makes perfect sense. Now let's head home. Um, okay. Uh, next up, uh, Pokemon, also in that investors meeting. Uh, we found out the sales numbers for Pokemon, um, Diamond and Pearl, Pokemon, the Diamond and Pearl remakes, uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, have sold 13,970,000 units. That's, I think, I don't know, like, that's not even in, like, the top 10 best-selling Pokemon games of all time, but I think that puts it as the ninth best-selling Switch game of all time. So, yeah, even though, like, there are poke Like, I think the best-selling Pokemon game is, like, 31 million units at the original red, red, blue, red, green, and blue. That's still pretty good, right? Being the fifth or the ninth best-selling Switch game of all time, still pretty good. Not as good as the second best-selling Pokemon game of all time, Sword and Shield, which is 23.9 million units, which is, I think, the fifth best-selling Switch game of all time. But yeah, the, so the Diamond and Pearl remakes are doing really good. Uh, whether that's a good or a bad thing, I, I think actually after playing Legends Arceus, it is definitively a bad thing. Like, yeah, I played them. I enjoyed them. I, I enjoyed it enough, right? It wasn't anything like amazing. Like, Legends Arceus is amazing. Like, it's generally... It is potentially the best Pokemon game ever. I'm... Do I want to say it's the best? Even though I haven't beat it yet. I kind of want to say it's the best Pokemon game ever. I don't. I'm not going to commit to that, but it's definitely a possibility. Definitely. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully it keeps selling well, and I wanted to top all these other games. Because if it does, that shows the Pokemon company that no, we need to keep making more games like this. But yeah, so Pokemon Sword and Shield is doing insanely well. And then on the actual sales charts. So the top 10 Switch games, um, let's see here. Can I just show this image? Um, I'll flash the image real quick. Uh, top 10 best-selling Switch games. Uh, here's the quick list from Daniel Ahmad. Um, other notable call-outs, Super Mario 3D World at 8 million, 8.8 million. Mario Superstars at 5.4, Skyward Sword at 3.8, Pokemon Snap at 2.3, excluding Japan, and Mario Golf at 2.26. But yeah, so the best-selling Switch game list hasn't really changed much. Um, Ring Fit Adventure still surprises me. Like, that's the Wii Fit of this generation. 
Like, Wii Fit is one of the top ten best-selling games of all time, which I really wouldn't think is the case, but it totally is. And now, yeah, we have this, um... Rain Fit Adventure is one also one of the best-selling Switch games of all time. And it's over 13 million units. The new Pokemon, again, ninth best-selling at 13 million. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is at 14 million, which I think probably Diamond and Pearl is going to surpass it, if not the new one. I wouldn't be surprised. Again, I think Legends Arceus has this in the bag. And we'll talk about that. Um, Let's see. Mario Superstar is still at 17. I'm surprised the new one has only sold 5 million. I don't know. Because, you know, whenever I talk about, like, oh, we should get a new Mario Kart game, people always talk about, like, oh, well, wouldn't a new Mario Kart game cannibalize the... or, like, either cannibalize the sales of the old one? Or would are people less willing to buy a new Mario Kart because they already have the old one? And I do wonder if the new Mario Kart... or the new Mario Party isn't doing as well because it's right because a lot of people already have the original and now they both have online play so i don't well i don't want to like commit to that or anything that does have me thinking that because uh, yes admittedly this is like years of sales whereas mario party's been out since what october so it's a little more complicated of a situation but i kind of i could see it right like there is potential there uh, Mario Odyssey at 23 million. Sword and Shield also at 23 million. Uh, Breath of the Wild at 25 million. Still, I'm I'm glad Breath of the Wild is doing better than Odyssey, because again, it just show because Breath of the Wild is such a good game. So is Odyssey, but there's just something special about Breath of the Wild, you know. Um, Smash Ultimate at 27 million, best-selling fighting game of all time, still. Um, Animal Crossing at 37 million. I feel like Animal Crossing has kind of, has kind of hit its stagnation point, where it's like, because I think last time it was, or, you know, at least for the past, like, few months, maybe even the past year. It's been around, like, 32 million. Like, I feel like, like, about this time last year, it was about 32 million. And now here it is at 37. So it's gone up about, what is that, like, five points? But not too much. But it's still doing insanely well. And then Mario Kart 8 at 43 million. It's, so that, basically, one in every four Switch users has Mario Kart 8. Which does not support. Again, I finally broke down and bought it. It's a real again. Mario Kart 8's one of the. It's it's easily the best kart racer game. And um, but yeah, better than every other Mario Kart easily. And um, I hope again. I I want my Nintendo Kart. I know people are. We talked about this earlier in the year. People are very divisive on that topic. Eh. And so the other things of note: Super Mario 3D World at 8.85 million. Um, yeah, no, of course, Bowser's Fury is fantastic, and 3D World is pretty solid. Skyward Sword at 3.8 is not bad. Pokemon Snap is admittedly better than I expected. Like, Pokemon Snap, well, people love the original Pokemon Snap. It, it's it's one of those, like, blockbuster games where you hear pe talk, talk about, like, people renting it a lot. But, like, not that many people actually bought it. Admittedly, not that many people bought an N64 either. But, um... Yeah. And then, uh, Mario Golf at 2.26. Uh, yeah, that's not surprising either. We also did find out... The, so, this, this was all reported, I think, what, two days ago. Or, no, this was... Yeah, this was basically midnight, um, or fr so like early, early Friday morning was when we got all this information. However, today we got all the information about Pokemon, right? Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's been out a week, and we already have sales numbers for its first week. Guess what? Pokemon Legends Arceus has sold 6.5 million units. 
I'm pretty... Oh, I don't want to sell that. I am pretty sure that is the best opening week of any Pokemon game. Ever. Like, and I think the second best is like 5.3, which I think was Sword and Shield, if I'm correct. I don't know. I could probably get Joe Baverick on that number, and I'm sure he has it. But, um... Or Joe Merrick, I mean. But yeah, so Pokemon Legends Arceus is one of the... Is the best-selling opening week of a Pokemon game ever. And I get it. Honestly, it's it's probably going to go on to be the best-selling Pokemon game of all time. Maybe. I don't... Actually, I, I don't want to go that far. I don't want to go that far, actually. But I will say it's a very good game that I highly, highly recommend. I... I, I you know, even though I'm not committed to saying it's the best Pokemon game of all time, I will say it is a much own a must own Switch title. It is a must own Switch title up there with Breath of the Wild, up there with Mario Odyssey, Mar probably Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, um, Golf Story. Yeah, no, I'd easily say Legends Arceus is a must own Switch title. But yeah, so it's doing insanely well. And again, I want it to sell well because I want the Pokemon company to look at it and be like, more Pokemon games in the future should be like this. Like, like okay, someone... I saw someone on Twitter being like... who They, they said they didn't really like Legends Arceus because it was missing too much of the traditional Pokemon style. And I think that... Admittedly, I think that's part of the problem with, with the Pokemon community, not with the game. I think the game's good. The problem with the Pokemon community is that they're both dripped in nostalgia while also not realizing that the nostalgia is like what's holding Pokemon back. Like the same people that will bitch and moan about Diamond and Pearl will then complain about Legends Arceus being too, um, right, right, le Diamond, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are too, um, they play it too safe, but yet yeah, Legends Arceus strays from the formula too much. Uh, Pokemon fans are so fucking entitled, man. But, uh, because you cannot win. Like, like Legends Arceus is, like, a winning hand. And yet, because it, or Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Because Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is the safe, like, the game that fans claim they wanted, a very faithful remake, whereas Legends Arceus is this new experimental thing. Something for everybody. And yet, nobody, and somehow that made, like, nobody happy. I was perfect. I loved it. Admittedly, yeah, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl didn't blow me away. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Okay, let's see here. Does Joe, does Joe Merrick have the numbers? Um, interactive Pokemon map. Ooh, yeah, that's some interesting things on Cerebi. Uh, let's see here. At the rate it's going, it should hit 15 million easy. Um, yeah. So I'm not seeing anything specific. But yeah, it's it's outsold um, Sword and Shield and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Like, and those games also had pretty good opening weeks. I'm sure I could find more if I looked into it more, but... Yeah, I, I want more games like this Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I think this is... Yeah. And yeah, I think you... But I do think, like, there is a way to do it where you get, like, oh, well, here... Like, what I want from, like, an open-world Pokemon game is you start off... Kind of like how in Breath of the Wild, you start off in the Great Plateau, and then you can go anywhere on the map. I want a Pokemon game where you start off... It's an open-world game. You start off in a town in the center of the map... And then from there, you could go anywhere. And you can tackle the gyms in any order. And as you, like, fight new Pokemon... And as you, like, get more gym bad badges... Not only do, like... Like, Pokemon just, like, get harder or whatever. And, like, I want from the beginning. Like, oh, boom. You could accidentally walk into, like, a level 85 Pokemon. That will instantly just kick your ass. Right? Kind of like the Lionel fight. And, um... If you leave the Great Plateau going... I want to say south... Maybe it's, like, southeast or something. You could immediately run into a Lionel. 
And I know in um, hard mode, there's a Lionel on the Great Plateau. But yeah, shit like that, I want more. Right, uh, like, I like... I like how Legends Arceus did it. I actually don't know in Legends Arceus if you if you catch like a Pokemon, like let's say you you can only control Pokemon up to level 10. Could you catch a level 40 Pokemon? I actually never tested that. Cause I know in like the starting area you find Pokemon that are like level 40. And I don't I I didn't try catching one. But if you can't, can you catch it and will it just not obey you? Like, I kind I, I, I didn't try that. I should have. But that would be interesting. But yeah. And then, then from the center of the island, there, in this, in my hypothetical Pokemon, there are 18, there are 16 gyms. One gym for every type. And you can tackle them in any order. And while you only need eight gym badges to tackle the Elite Four, you can theoretically get all 16. So, like, on one hand, there's a sense of replayability there. But, like, oh, well, hey, in this playthrough, I went to, like, the normal gym. Then I went to the fire gym. Then I went to the ghost gym. And, right, you tackled them in that order. But then on a different playthrough, you do a different gym first. And every gym badge you get makes the opponents a little stronger. And maybe it should be a thing where, like, oh, there are 16 possible gyms you can go to. But you can only do eight. So it like encourages replayability. I know some people would hate that. And maybe the, uh, maybe there's a post game thing in there. But I don't know. I feel like there's potential there. In like giving you all these options. And then only allowing you to do like certain ones. And right they all branch out from. Like the game will direct you towards like the normal gym. But you don't have to go to the normal gym. You can go to any gym you want. But yeah, I just, I just think it's really interesting. Like, that's... But yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like somewheres... Because, like, part of their complaint, listening to other people talk... Like, some of the people who... Again, and they don't... I don't think they hate the game. They just didn't love it as much. Was that, like, oh... There's, like... So, like, one of the things this game does is it really get gets rid of emphasis on battling. Like, battling just isn't important in Legends Arceus. It still happens... But it's just, like, you can, again, I was talking about this yesterday. You can probably beat Legends Arceus without ever doing a wild encounter battle. I think you you still have to do trainer battles, obviously. But, like, random wild encounters? No, I don't think you gotta worry about those. Yeah, we know that's real. But, yeah, and some people don't like that. and But I personally do. Again, I kind of wish Legends Arceus did more of, like, an active time combat system. Just so that it would, like, fully separate it. But honestly, all the quality of life improvements that make this game so seamless. Because, like, again, in Legends Arceus, you barely have to go into any menus. Honestly, you could, you never have to go into menus. It's all controlled with, like, just bumpers and, like, the X button. And that's, like, so, and it's just so seamless. It's so good at what it does. I am totally impressed with Legends Arceus. Just absolutely impressed. But yeah, one of one, the best opening week of a Pokemon game. It's really... Again, we've been talking about it all week. And I'm going to keep playing it. That's my plan for the next two days. So, um, our next story... If I have, let's see. My next story is, oh, okay. You know, since we're talking about, okay, I'm not going to move on to the, the next kind of story. So Nintendo in their earnings call, which is where we get all these financial numbers from, talked about NFTs. They specifically said that Nintendo ha is on the periphery so nintendo has not said they're not doing nfts i should start off by saying that and part of me gets why they're saying they're not doing nf right they did why they didn't say definitive no because in this is an investors meeting these are the people who want nintendo to make money and if it's clear investors care about money oops uh we'll get back to that uh that's the next story Nint right investors care about money and NFTs are basically free money because they're pyramid schemes. 
So Nintendo couldn't just come out and say, no, we don't want to do NFTs. Instead, however, they say we're looking into NFTs, but at the moment we have no plans because we can't think of a way to make NFTs fun. So it's not a definitive no, but it's kind of a no. Because yeah, NFTs are pyramid schemes. How do you make that fun? Because they're fucking pyramid schemes that are scamming people out of all their money. Same thing with cryptocurrency. You can't really make that fun. So I totally get where Nintendo's coming from. And I, they said the same thing about like the metaverse. Like Facebook is obsessed with like creating the metaverse. Because you know, they're destroying the world. And instead of trying to fix things, they just want to move everyone into a virtual world. The metaverse. So, yeah, Nintendo said the same thing about Metaverse. They're they're f looking into it, but they can't think of a way to make the Metaverse fun. Because that's... The Metaverse is... Vi like, I've complained about, like, games like um, Avengers and Destiny 2 that are games that basically just want you to... T like, they want g you to take a second job. Like, they're such grindy, annoying video games that they're basically, like, a second job. And that's what the Metaverse is. It's like virtual reality that is just a job. And you know, metaverse real estate and all that bullshit. Yeah, no. So Nintendo is... Like, they're not going to say no because it's an investor's meeting. But they're saying, like, if we're going to do it, we're going to try to make it fun. And I don't think they can, so hopefully we just ne never get Nintendo NFTs. Please, God, let us never get Nintendo NFTs. Like, I'm alright. Like, you know, you, you know, the second N Nintendo starts putting, like microtransactions and loot bo and i'm not talking the pokemon company pokemon company is its own entity fuck the i love this legends rcs fuck the pokemon company pokemon unite is easily the most greedy game i have ever seen worse than anything ea or activision blizzard has made so far yeah it's worse than all that shit because it has loot boxes it has pay to win mechanics it's the fucking worst thing ever I'm not talking about them. I'm talking Nintendo. Nintendo, right, they'll do shit in their mobile games, but on their console games, no, they don't do that. But if they ever do, that's it. That's just, if Nintendo ever does microtransactions or loot boxes, like, like they do DLC, but Nintendo has the best DLC in the industry. The Happy Home Paradise here in Animal Crossing is amazing. Some of the best DLC, I, again, and Mario Kart 8's DLC was fantastic, especially because it was only like 15 bucks, and it was so much content. Smash Bros. DLC, a little pricey, but its quality is so high. Smash Bros. DLC is so quality. Not much quantity, but the quality is really good. But yeah, Nintendo made DLC work. I don't think they can make microtransactions work. I don't think they can make loot boxes work. So if Nintendo ever does loot boxes or microtransactions, that's it. I'm done with Nintendo. In fact, I'm probably just done with video games at that point. Like, once that happens, I just take wherever we are and just stop playing video games. Ever, or specifically, start playing any new video games. I'll only play the old shit after that. Probably, anyways. Unless, of course, it fails epically and the pushback is so hard that Nintendo agrees not to do it ever again. Which is possible. But yeah, um, so that's Nintendo on NFTs. Our next thing, I'm just going to keep pressing A in the background. So people have got, gotten their hands on Steam Decks. And um, we got some size comparisons. And someone made a nice... Um, Steam Deck size comparison like thing, comparing it to all the different consoles. And I want to just show this off real quick. So it starts off with the PS Vita. You know, that's... What is that right there? I have no idea what that is. But yeah, we're starting off with the PS Vita. You know, a, a moderately sized system. And yeah, shows how big the Steam Deck is. Now this... I think it's... Is it the next one? Yeah, this next one blows me away. So this is the Atari Lynx. The Atari Lynx is the largest handheld console. Like, the Atari Lynx is huge. Look, like, whenever I think of, like, big systems, like, the Game Gear is very big. No, the Atari Lynx is a massive. And the Steam Deck is bigger than that. Holy crap, this thing is huge. It's bigger than the Atari Lynx. 
And the Atari Lynx is huge. Oh my, this, this is the one that, out of everything on here, this is the one that blows me away. The Atari Lynx. Um, that's a Steam controller, and that's an Xbox controller. Again, this thing is big. Um, this is the box. Not a, they, I don't think they're, they show off a Game Boy comparison, but they show off a Game Boy box. So yeah, this thing is probably as big as like three Game Boys. Or, yeah, because like the Game Boy is probably only like that big. It's not actually, the Game Boy is not actually that big. Um, this is a portable Famicom. Um, the Famicom's the NES, for those who don't know. Yeah. Um, a Turbo Express, that's a portable TurboGrafx-16. Uh, here's the Nintendo Switch. And not only is it bigger than the Nintendo Switch, like, it's basically, right, like, look at that distance. It's also thicker. You can see how thin the Nintendo Switch is compared to how much, like, girth this thing has. I mean, this is, again, this is, like, a PC. And not not even, like, I know it's better, like, quality-wise, it's better than the Switch. But not, like, insanely higher. But, yeah, it's so much bigger. Uh, here's the Game Gear I was talking about. Again, the Game Gear is pretty big as well. But, yeah, it's bigger than that. Um... Sega Super Wild Gear, which is an attachment to the Game Gear. Um, I think it's a... Is it, is it... It's like an enhancer, and I think it's like a backlight and whatnot. Here's the Game Boy Advance. Uh, yeah, the Game Boy Advance is actually pretty tiny. And then we have, um... The, G, the Game Boy Advance SP. And, yeah, this thing is super tiny. Oh, come on. And the stream crashed. Fuck. And we crashed. Shit, give me a second. God damn it. I don't know why I've been cra Like, I can't open websites on web browsers anymore. Like, I used to just be able to do that, and now I can't. It just crashes the stream. Ugh. I don't know why. I think we only have, like, one or two left. So, uh, we have the Nokia N-Gage. Uh, this is, right, this little thing that was... I think it was also a phone. Again, it's Nokia. Yeah. Uh, we have the... What is this? Next to the GPD Win 3. I have no idea what this is. Like, this isn't the NVIDIA Shield. I don't think he ever compares it to the Game Boy Micro. I'm, I'm surprised that isn't here. Uh, the next to the Iona, Ionia Next... Also, I have also no idea what this thing is. I've never heard of this thing. And then, you know, Banana for Scale. And I think the final one here is the PSP. Oh, no, there's actually a few more. The OG PSP. Um, again, the Vita's a little bigger. Um, the Virtual Boy. And then he's got a whole thing about how he got a Virtual Boy for, like, 30 bucks back in the day. Yeah. God, remember when Nintendo tried to sell this as a portable console? And Steam Deck next to a Steam Deck. Uh, there's some Game Gear stuff. The Wii U Gamepad? It's bigger than the Wii U Gamepad. Again, I remember people comparing the Wii U Gamepad to the Atari Lynx. And complaining how big the Wii U Gamepad is. This thing is huge. I know the Switch also cut off about here as well. Right? And the Switch, the Gamepad is barely bigger than the Switch. But yeah. It's crazy how Nintendo went from this freaking Fisher Price plastic toy to the Switch, which looks so which looks so much more sleek and so much more refined. And I still I don't think this like yeah, definitely this does kind of look more like the Wii U gamepad. Definitely, but I don't think that this thing looks bad at all. <laughs> Sad PS Vita. But yeah, um those are just a bunch of size comparisons. I think it's really interesting. Cause you know the Steam Deck's out later this month. I think they're they're starting to ship them out now. But I don't think it's officially out until the end of the month. And, you know, more and more games are being updated as compatible. I think the Steam Deck's actually pretty cool. I think the idea... Again, I think competition... Like, I think competition is very healthy in the game industry. A competitor like... Right? Like, the DS did so well. 
that PlayStation created the PS Vita to try to act off of that. And the, that, that's more the Game Boy did so well as well. The Game Boy Advance, I think, sold over like 60 million units. Not as much as the original Game Boy, but still really well. And then they tried. PlayStation tried to compete with the the PlayStation the PlayStation Portable, and the DS sold 154 million units. <laughs> and then the PS Vita, admittedly, part of the reason the Vita died was um, PlayStation's fault. Like they just didn't support the system. Here, it's a really good system, actually. Like I actually know people really like the Vita, even though PlayStation barely supported it. But yeah. I guess let's head to the Happy Home Paradise real quick. We're just standing around hitting things. Again, it's a, today is a news day. We've just got so many news stories. But yeah, I just I just think those comparisons are interesting. The, it's the Atari Lynx one, though, because I just always think how big the Atari Lynx is. Like, it's just so big, and this thing is bigger than that. I know the Atari Lynx, but, like, the Atari Lynx is, like, such a small screen, and, again, that's what makes the Switch so impressive. And then our final news story. So Rockstar came out this morning and said the next GT Grand Theft Auto game is in active development. So there, so GTA, so right, people, people have been really, I think they also came out today and said that GTA 5 will be on PlayStation on like March 15th. Because, you know, they've been hinting that, hey, GTA 5 is coming to PlayStation. Again, that game's almost 10 years old. I think it's still got like, a few more years until then but it really like if you told me gta 5 was 10 years old i'd believe you it's probably actually closer to like seven but it feels so much older than that oh again it was an xbox 360 game originally but yeah the next grand theft auto game is in development it's probably oh look at you i like you Who are, what's your name zell oh yeah i like you zell i like the cut it I like the cut of your jib, Zell. But yeah, GTA is in active development. It specifically does not say GTA 6. It just says the next Grand Theft Auto game. So that could mean anything from just another remake. Oh, look, they're like building a sandcastle. There are things. I'm choosing to say it as sandcastle and not like beach, uh, not like digging for treasure. But yeah, so the next, so it could be GTA 6. It could be a remake of, I don't know, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. It, and now, admittedly, I do expect the next GTA to be fully online. Like I expect the next game to be full, like they kind of took like a half step with GTA 5. I think it's very clear that for the next GTA game, they're just going to go fully online. Like, that's where Grand Theft Auto makes all of its money off of the shark cards. So it would just make sense for them to just fully go in on it and put the entire game online. Yep. I don't love the idea, and I hate the... Like, there's a company... Like, the micro... Again, I talk about microtransactions being a problem. The shark cards in GTA V are terrible. And they don't get called out enough for it. Like, much like how people won't call out the Pokemon company because they love Pokemon, people won't call out Rockstar for the shark cards because they love Grand Theft Auto. But it makes money, and people don't give it enough shit, so of course they're going to keep doing it. just reading something yeah that's that's basically all the news for today there was a bunch of it oh and then uh 
God, going back to NFTs, uh, Kanye West came out and said that he's not going to be making NFTs. Which, Kanye West is the type of person where I could either see him being 100% in on NFTs or 100% against NFTs. No middle ground. Admittedly, I'd say the same thing about Donald Trump. He would either be 100% into it or 100% against it. I think his, his wife makes NFTs, Melania. Yeah, they didn't sell very well because the blockchain they were backed on ended up um, collapsing. So, like, the prices they were going to be sold for got, like, cut in half. I mean, it didn't completely collapse, but, you know, the prices basically got slashed of what they would have been if they had just sold them for U.S. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, that Kanye would, is totally anti-NFT, which doesn't surprise me. But if he had also been pro-NFT, that also wouldn't have surprised me. That's just the kind of guy Kanye is. He's a fucking idiot. I mean, yeah, it's good he's not doing NFTs. But it doesn't change the fact that he's a fucking idiot. Um, yeah, I just, I'm gonna get back to playing Pokemon. You know, I've been playing Pokemon. I played it a bunch yesterday, and I'll, I didn't play it at all today. But I'm gonna play it a bunch tomorrow. I'm probably actually going to bed. It, it was a long day today. <sighs> I had such a big dinner tonight as well. I'm like, I'm, I'm full, and I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to go to bed. I need to take the train to Sleepy Time Junction. Because somebody is so tired he can barely function. Yeah, so I guess we'll call it there. Because, yeah, we had a bunch of news. Yeah, Switch is still doing well. I'm, again, I'm honestly blown away Grand Theft Auto V is not on Switch. Like, that should have happened year two. Same time Overwatch got on Switch. In fact, I think Overwatch took too long to get on Switch as well. Like, that should have happened in... Because, again, it was an Xbox 360 game. It could have totally ran on Switch. When did GTA V come out, actually? It was probably 2013. But, I when did... Because I, th I was thinking... Because, um, as you know, the Super Bowl is next week. And um, it's the Cincinnati. And that's where... Uh, the Cincinnati Zoo is where Harambe was shot. So I saw someone being like, oh, this year it's, um, we do it for Harambe. I guess one of the players said that. And I was like, God, oh, Harambe was like 10 years ago. I, I, or at least I thought it was at least like 2014. Or, right, 2014, 2015, which I know isn't 10 years. That's like closer to eight, eight seven or eight. But no, no, Harambe was 2016. Ugh, that's, I feel like it was, I know, I think it's COVID has screwed up our time dilation. But yeah, that was, it feels like it was so much longer than that. GTA was September 2013. Again, that feels like it was so much, huh, yeah, it feels like it was so much longer than that, but yeah. So it's seven, eight, it's nine years old, so it's it's ten next year. And again, it has it has been officially released more times than Skyrim. I, I I think it finally broke I think it broke that or it breaks that record with the new releases next week or next month. Yeah. But to be fair, that GTA um, 5 is one of those games that, like, oh, I always shit on games that, like, say, like, oh, we're going to do a 10-year plan, and then after, like, a year, they cancel it. Anthem, Animal Crossing, um, I, I think, I guess Fallout 76 is still doing stuff, but, you know, there's a bunch of games that, like, say that, oh, we're, um, I'm surprised Marvel's Avengers are still doing stuff, even though I'm going to guess Spider-Man's going to be the last update. Really, um, I think Spider-Man's going to be the last update for Marvel's Avengers, if I had to guess. But yeah, these games are always like, oh, we're going to do a 10-year plan. GTA 
is one of the few games that have done that 10-year plan. Admittedly, I don't think they said they had a 10-year plan, but that game still gets new content all the time. And, um, yeah, it's GTA, Destiny 2, which admittedly the first Destiny was supposed to get all the content. And then they just said, now nah, we're... And then Activision probably made them do, oh, do Destiny 2. And then they've supported Destiny 2 since then. And I guess Fortnite, but admittedly Fortnite's a free-to-play game. I don't know, I feel like free-to-play games kind of fall into, like, a different category. Because they have more incentive to keep updating... You know, Fortnite, Among Us, uh, okay, Fall Guys isn't free to play. We'll see, we'll see how long that one sticks around. Again, I still really enjoy Fall Guys, and I really enjoy Among Us. I still really do. The, the mods are great. Oh my gosh. But I've talked about that over and over again. I just, Among Us is fun, man. It makes for some good social games. And it makes for some great content on YouTube. Yep. Uh, so we'll be back next week, or tomorrow, um, I don't know, will I remember to do, um, the thing? Maybe. Like, will I remember to do the music tomorrow? Maybe, we'll see. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm gonna end off. I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Until next time, peace.